But the, there was a, a movement then that a lot of people called the river movement. You could have called it something else, but it seemed to be a theme God was saying. This was in the 90s. And people that would spend the time and not expect God to do what he wanted to do in 60 seconds would often have profound encounters with the Lord. So we tapped into this in our church in Colorado. We just said, we're going to get in on whatever God's doing, this renewal, this river. We had many services till midnight, one, two in the morning. But I'm going to tell you two stories. This is when I had the vision. This is why I'm thinking about it. But one night about midnight, I think there were only about 30 people left in the room. And person laying over here, person sitting back here, you know, just scattered here and there. Maybe two or three of you are talking quietly. Some of us just overseeing it, waiting for everything to get finished so we can go home. And Then all 30, I'm going to say 30, of us started smelling flowers. And we looked at each other and said, you smell that? Yeah, some flowers like roses, or, but it's a mix of different flowers. And we kept looking, where is that coming from? We all smelled it. So then, I'm going to call him Ken. Ken is over here. He's been out in the spirit for an hour or two. And he's not the kind of guy that he's a hunter, an outdoorsman, he's a rough guy. You would never see him, you know, you'd never see him step out in the aisle and be dancing for he's just a kind of a reserved guy. But he's just out. All of a sudden, as we're smelling these flowers. He sits up. His eyes are still closed. He starts sniffing. But his eyes are still closed. He gets on all fours. And he starts crawling around the room. And I'm just watching this. Like, are we about to have an exorcism here or what? You know? gets to a certain place and he just stops and sits there. He's just eyes closed. He has no idea where he is. He's having a vision, an encounter. We find out later. So then he just sits on the floor, all this on the, on the floor, never made it to a chair. He just sat there and then he began to cry. And finally, after another 20, 30 minutes, kind of comes out of this and he's, he's really broken up and having trouble talking. He told me later, not then, what happened. He said, as I was laying there, I was on, in this field. And then I realized I'm in a field of flowers. He gets up on all fours and he's crawling around this field smelling these flowers. And he's on a hill so he just kind of meanders down and there's a stream. And he sits next to the stream. This this is like dreams. God can do strange things and visions and dreams that wouldn't make any sense naturally. But he said... I sat there and I had pictures in my pocket of my past and some of the shameful things that I'd never been able to 
overcome the guilt and the condemnation and the some of them are just vile he said they're just they were just bad and I would pull them out and I was sitting on the edge of the stream looking at these pictures and Jesus came up to me I said what are you doing Ken oh just looking at some pictures we don't hear any of this, obviously. We're watching it happen, but we don't know what's happening. Oh, looking at some pictures. What kind of pictures? Oh, just stuff from my past. Well, let me see them. Oh, he said, Jesus, I can't show you these pictures. You don't want to see these pictures. Sure I do. Let me have them. No, please don't make me give you these pictures, Jesus. Let me have them. So he gives him the first one. And Jesus starts folding it until he folds it up into a little boat. And then he put it on the water and it floated away. He said, give me the next one. And he went through all the pictures until he had folded up all the pictures and made them all float away on the river. And then he said, oh, you're never going to have to see those pictures ever again. They're gone. And he woke up free and he never struggled with guilt or condemnation another day in his life. On another occasion, I haven't told these stories in years. <laughs> On another occasion, there's a young girl, we all know her well. She's had a, some things in her past that caused her to be insecure. And I think she would have been abused, maybe, I know rejected, but I think there was some abuse there physically. And she was, same thing, laying there just out in the spirit just for an hour or two. None of us knew what was happening. Finally, she woke up, she was crying. She said, in, in the spirit, I was listening to a recording of my life. And some of these horrible things that happened to me that she'd never been able to overcome were playing. She was hearing them. And Jesus walked up to her in this vision. He said, what are you listening to? She said, oh, there's this things, you know, from the past and he said, let me have that recorder. She handed it to him and he pulled a baseball bat out from behind his back. And he smashed that thing to little tiny pieces in this vision. And he just looked at her and said, I never did like that recording and walked away. <laughs> she was completely healed of all the pain, all the trauma, all the fear, all the rejection. You can't explain that. When God begins to show up and do things supernaturally through the river, it moves us into a supernatural realm that enables us to minister not from here, it's not that we completely disengage and go in, go into trances. It, I mean, those people were probably in trances, but I'm talking about the people ministering. It's not that you don't, you don't use this. It's just that you're no longer having to try and generate what needs to be done and the power to do it and the strength to do it from your own ability, whether it be just your own working at it or, or your mind. Suddenly, things change and the river's flowing. And when the river flows, ladies who are the city prostitute 
who's had four husbands or five, whatever it was, and living with somebody and shacked up with somebody now that's not her husband. All of a sudden has an encounter. How you, you can't explain this, that in a, in a second of time, Something clicks in her and she realizes this is a Messiah and he just offered me living water and she decided to take it and she's completely free and she's now, she's now not the town prostitute, she's a town evangelist. 